In this video, I'm going to discuss a huge single plane golf swing myth. There are a lot of myths in golf, and that's what I mean by myths are arbitrary rules that are dogmatically followed that are not supported by evidence. So that's what I mean by a myth. Here's an example of a, a golf swing myth. Don't cross the line at the top of your backswing. Well, the greatest golfer in Ireland's history crossed the line. This is Jimmy Bruno I just did a video about. Look how much he crosses the line. Look how high his elbow is. He's got two, he's breaking two rules, the super flying elbow and super crossing the line. How about a putting myth? Well, when we're taught to putt, we're taught to put our eyes over the ball. And we're not taught to have our eyes over here. We want to have our eyes over the ball, not this way. Well, David Lee clearly demonstrated how foolish that is because David Lee was able to putt with multiple different implements. Here he is putting with a chair. <laughs> I mean, that guy was too cool. So the ball was here. You can clearly see his eyes were not even remotely over the ball. He also putted in this video with a tomato stick that was out here. So you can see how far away it was, and his eyes were basically looking over here. So these are just myths that are made up. So what is the the golf swing, the single plane golf swing myth? What I'm referring to here is the because I, I get comments on my YouTube channel when I talk about when I show this image, and people say, "Oh, you, you're talking about." They tell me, "So you, oh, you're talking about 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 doing a single plane swing like like Mon Norman." And that's not what I'm saying. That's, that is not the focus of the amateur golfer's dilemma. The amateur golfer's dilemma, which is, you can see the title of, of, of the book, is about individual golfers finding what setup position is best for them so that at impact, their head does not go above the line. Now, most amateurs should be setting up around D or E, but that does not mean that you must do a single plane swing, and I'll show you what I mean in this video. So here's Tiger. You can see where his hands are, and at impact, you can see where his hands are now. So clearly, he has a, a non, I don't know how many planes he has, but he certainly doesn't have a single plane, plane swing, which is fine. So if you could flush it like Tiger and other pros. Would you even care about positions, for example, in your backswing, where the club is, if it's open, shut, or closed, if your wrist is bowed or not, if you were quick to take it away? Does it make any difference as long as you could flush it? And, of course, the answer is no. Would it make any difference if you cross the line at the top of your backswing? I already showed you that. That's absolutely not true. Would there be any reason to care if you had a one, two, or even six-plane swing so long as you square the club at impact? And the answer, of course, is no. So we amateurs really need to unpucker ourselves and free ourselves from all these arbitrary rules that represent myths. So I really enjoyed the movie Shawshank Redemption. So in my mind, golf swing instruction is absolutely institutionalized. And then amateur golfers and pros too, basically self-Shawshank and they get trapped in a, in a myth in an arbitrary rule that has that should never have been there in the first place. So let's look at me, and I'm a 7-8 handicap. So my setup, you can see, is D. I don't feel comfortable if I have my hands on a straight line in the fashion that Mo Norman or Bryson DeChambeau did. It just doesn't work for me. So I don't. Now, if I had to stand further away from the ball so I didn't stand up at impact, I would do that. But I, but I don't. So let's look at my swing, which is a quasi single plane swing, not by design. I didn't sit there and look at my backswing positions and try to figure out where the plane was. All I cared about was how far back I needed to stand so that at impact I could be flush or at least have the best chance for being flush. So let's look at the top of my backswing. Look at that. Ooh, single planey looking. Did I get there? From a single plane, not really, because I kind of suck it inside a little bit. But then when I get to the top, I'm on the downswing plane, and at impact, pretty solid. So quasi-single plane swing, a quasi-single plane swing. So did I again? Did I try to do that on purpose? No. All I wanted to do was stand further back from the ball so that I do not stand up at impact. So here is me, just about at impact, 
And you can see we'll, we'll go back to the beginning, set up. So what I suggest that you do to figure out where you are in here is to take a record your swing with your phone and then screenshot yourself and then put on your computer, screenshot yourself at setup at the top of your backswing and at impact. And as long as your head does not go above the line and you maintain your spine angle and you're flush, there you are. Then you'll know where you need to be at setup. So with my swing in mind, which may or may not work for you, let's do Miller Barber. I did a video with about Miller Barber the other day with his, he and Eamon Darcy who have such unique swings. So Miller Barber and I have a very similar setup. Now I think he's in his late sixties here with this swing. Uh, and he's got, he's more chubby in the middle. So, you know, I don't have that part, but if you look at our hands, hand to thigh, similar distance. So does Miller Barber do what I do? So here's my, actually I, what I wanted to show you first and I forgot, but I'm not going to redo the video. Sorry. We're just going to keep going here. So this is Miller's setup and my setup and here's Miller at impact. So if all I showed you was this, and you never ever in a million years saw Miller Barber's swing before, what would you think that Miller Barber's backswing position looks like? Well, let's, let's look at mine. Theoretically, if the rule was, if you set up like D or E, you must therefore have a single plane swing, well then Miller Barber should, that should happen to Miller Barber. But of course, if you ever seen Miller Barber swing, we know that definitely doesn't happen. So let's look at Miller Barber at the top of his backswing. Clearly, <laughs> he stands up at his backswing and he almost crosses the line. His elbows are super high, clearly off his, his setup plane. And I'm basically on my setup plane. So I'm quasi single plane. Miller Barber has the same setup position as I do and absolutely does not. But at impact, you wouldn't know. Look, look where he is at impact. His setup position is perfect for him so that his impact position is such that he is not standing up and going into what they call standing up years ago. So standing up at impact basically equals early extension. So he doesn't do that. And I have found that this setup distance is fine for me. I don't do it. You need to figure out what your proper setup position is. And if you have a one plane swing, good for you. If you don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't make any difference. Just figure out what your ideal setup position is for you so that at impact, you maintain your spine angle and you're not standing up. It's really that simple. And that's really the focus of the amateur golfer's dilemma that I discuss in my various videos that you can watch and in my book that you can easily get by just going to Amazon and putting in the amateur golfer's dilemma. And there it is. You can look inside. I got 25 chapters and five appendices that you can check out.